Don't let a single one get away. You see, this right here, I love this. You see, the Super Smash Bros. series is one to behold. There are so many great video game franchises in this one game, and I just really love this game for that sole reason. I'm not a competitive Smash Bros. player by any means, and I'm not even really that great at Smash Bros., but I will tell you this, it's one of those games I can never put down. Smash Bros. is also a way to get introduced to a whole bunch of new gaming franchises. Me personally, when I played the game Super Smash Bros. Brawl, I instantly became a Zelda fan because of all the great characters. All in all, Smash Bros. does a lot, and a lot for even dead franchises as well. Characters like Captain Falcon, Mr. Game & Watch, and even Rob all have a chance to be in the spotlight once again because of this game. Smash Bros. has so many wacky, fun characters, and even characters that actually don't even belong in the same game as some of these other characters, like Cloud and Mario in the same game is kind of weird, but hey, it's really cool. But you know, there's one thing that really does irk me about Smash Bros. There's just one teensy tiny little thing that just really continues to get on my nerves every time I play that game. If you read the title or the thumbnail of this video, or if you just know me, I am a Sonic fan, so what I'm going to tell you should not come as a surprise. Sonic's representation in Smash is awful. What's going on guys, it's Sonic Star, and in today's video I'm going to be discussing with you not only Sonic's representation being bad in the first place, but also how I would go about improving it. As always, if you like this type of video and want to see more, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me and my channel out a ton. It also wouldn't hurt to turn on that post notifications bell, that way you never miss a video. But with all of that out of the way, let's discuss Sonic's representation. Sonic the Hedgehog made his first appearance in the third installment of this series called Super Smash Bros. Brawl. However, Sonic was initially going to be in Super Smash Bros. Melee, but due to time constraints, that just did not happen. Nevertheless, Sonic still made it in the series in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, albeit kind of late. On October 10th, 2000. 2007, Sonic was officially announced to be in Super Smash Bros. Brawl per the actual website. Now mind you, Super Smash Bros. Brawl was revealed before E3 in 2005 at a press conference by Satoru Awada, who at the time was Nintendo's president. Now even though Brawl was not shown off by 2005's E3, it was shown off the following year. At E3 2006, we had a release date slated for December 3rd, 2007 in the US. However, the game was later delayed to February 10th, 2008. And then finally, it wouldn't be long after it until the game got delayed yet again March 9th of that exact same year. Now the reason I'm telling you this information is because initially Smash Bros was going to come out in 2007, specifically December 3rd, 2007. Sonic the Hedgehog was announced for Super Smash Bros Brawl on October 10th, 2007. If Smash Bros did not get delayed, there's a likely chance we wouldn't have seen Sonic in this game. But even with delays in question, Sonic the Hedgehog was still a very late character to be put in this game. With that being said, I imagine that contributed heavily to Sonic's lackluster moveset. But even still, Sonic was the second third party character added to the Smash Bros. series and this was a milestone for any company. Sonic had Green Hill Zone, him in the game, as well as a Shadow the Hedgehog assist trophy. In all honesty, during that time, Sonic seemingly had a lot. I mean, there were only two third party characters at the time, so it made Sonic look like he was being treated fairly amongst the others. However, the complaints for me really started to arise when Smash 4 came out. Now don't get me wrong, I really do love Smash 4 and I love everything it brought to the table, but when I look at this through the lens of being a Sonic fan, I really just don't like it that much. Smash 4 is the game where I definitely thought the Sonic franchise would be represented a bit differently in terms of how it was before. But in turn, I couldn't be more wrong. Sure, Smash 4 gave us a whole new stage, that being Windy Hill Zone, and also Tails and Knuckles Me costumes, but I just don't think this is enough. It may or may not be just me, but when I think of Windy Hill Zone, I think it's just a modernized version of Green Hill Zone. This might be the reason why Green Hill is only on the 3DS and Windy Hill is on the Wii U only. Bottom line is, I feel like this is way too similar to be regarded as anything new. The Tails and Knuckles Me costumes are cool, but it just kind of feels like a slap in the face considering Sonic is one of the biggest IPs in the whole Smash Bros. series. Sonic also got new voice clips from Roger Craig Smith because at the time he was a new voice actor as well as a couple of new songs, but aside from that, that was really all that Sonic got changed. But even if it wasn't a moveset getting changed, new characters added from his series and all sorts of other stuff happening to this character, I expected to see him more embellished on the Smash Bros. series. There's one particular moment in the Super Smash Bros. 4 history where I felt like Sonic definitely should have been included. On June 11th, 2013, Mega Man officially joined Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and for Wii U. Now, if you don't know already, Mega Man and Sonic are two characters that actually have real history together. Having known that information, this should have been the one time we actually got to see Sonic and Mega Man interact in some sort of cinematic trailer. Now, of course, Sonic had not been properly revealed to be in Smash 4 at that point, but even still, they should have definitely pulled some strings to make sure Sonic got revealed before Mega Man did. 
Having Sonic be showcased in this one trailer alone would have made me feel a lot better about Sonic's representation as a whole in Smash 4. Instead, it feels like a very minuscule update from what Smash Brawl had. And then finally, you have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now, if it wasn't 4, it should have been this game that completely switched up how Sonic was going to play and also how Sonic the franchise was represented. I guess the worst part about Ultimate is that there were so many leaks and rumors hinting that there's going to be all sorts of new characters like Shadow making an appearance in Ultimate. I'm sure by now we all know about the infamous Grinch leak. That leak had so many great things, but what had me, a Sonic fan, most excited to see was Shadow in this game. It felt as if my prayers were finally being answered and perhaps that we'd actually have some good Sonic representation in Smash Bros. But as we all know, those hopes and dreams were shattered immediately when we found out that Ken was going to be the final base character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. But either way, if you compare the Sonic from Smash 4 to the Sonic from Smash Ultimate, there are hardly, if any, differences. I mean, of course his final smash is different, but most characters are just because Sakurai admitted he wanted the Final Smashes to be quick and to the point. Sonic's moveset has been the exact same since Super Smash Bros. Brawl. A lot of people say that Sakurai says that he got most of Sonic's moveset from the game Sonic 06. And I'm here to tell you right now, as an avid Sonic 06 fan and enjoyer, I can't vouch under these circumstances. Hardly any of these moves look like anything I've seen in Sonic 06. It feels like lots of Sonic's moves are just him, well, in a ball. Whether it's the homing attack, the spin dash, the neutral air, it all just feels very uninspired and unoriginal. To me, it just feels like this is a really rushed moveset that just needed to be implemented just because it was quick and easy. Like I said earlier, it seems as if Sonic was kind of a last minute character put in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. You know, since he came rather late in comparison to other fighters. But even still, I was mostly fine with this moveset given the time constraints they were working with. But after a while, in all honesty, it's time for an upgrade. From Super Smash Bros. Brawl all the way up to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, a lot of characters have gotten their own individual changes. One of my own personal favorite characters characters who got an upgrade was Link from The Legend of Zelda. I personally love what they've done for the character and I really was expecting the same thing for Sonic. Now I'm not talking about a large scale redesign or anything along those lines, but even still I was expecting Sonic to get some sort of reboot type treatment. So I guess the question you're probably asking yourself is, if he doesn't like this moveset, which moveset would I prefer? Well to be totally honest, this is a completely different game where they could have easily pulled from for the entirety of Sonic's moveset. And that game is Sonic Battle. That game has so many inspired moves in Sonic's arsenal that I believe it puts Super Smash Bros. Sonic to shame. And it's not like the moveset wouldn't work, it's literally from a Sonic fighting game, it just makes the most sense. Unfortunately, the likely truth is we're probably not going to see a Sonic moveset change in the near future. Even if we do get another Smash Bros, it's really unlikely to see this moveset even get changed. Only reason I say that is, it's not very likely we see a whole character's moveset get completely changed. Sonic's moveset is finished, it's simple, it's done, and it's easy to transport that moveset to future Smash games, especially in comparison to completely making a new one. But even if we can't get a new moveset for Sonic, let's talk about a couple of potential characters. E3 coming up around the corner, let's talk about a couple of characters that actually do have a chance of getting in this game. Well, first off, they're probably going to pick some of the more popular characters from the Sonic the Hedgehog games. With that being said, the next character after Sonic to be the most popular character in the franchise would be Shadow, and he's already an assist trophy. Now, I'm not sure if assist trophies deconfirm characters being in the game in Challenger Pack 2, but if they do, Shadow and Knuckles are two characters that'll be completely out of the picture. But that's not a big deal because there are other popular Sonic characters and two come to mind, Dr. Eggman and Tails the Fox. These characters are very easy candidates for this game. If another Sonic character is going to be in Smash, it's likely that it's one of these two, primarily due to their popularity. But if I were given a choice of which one I'd prefer to have in Smash Bros, I would have to go with Dr. Eggman. While Tails might have the slight edge in terms of popularity, I think Eggman would boost the series as a whole. Seeing as though there's a lot of characters that have their own rivals in Smash, I would love to see Sonic part of that equation. That little villain's introduction trailer always gets me so hype, and I really want to see Sonic and Eggman part of that trailer. These two have one of the most iconic hero-villain rivalries. It feels like there's so many villains in Smash Ultimate, and I think the one that they're really missing is Dr. Eggman. Now, is it 100% likely Eggman ends up in Smash? Probably not. I don't see Eggman actually getting revealed at E3. I really do hope I'm wrong, but I just don't see it happening. However, if there's going to be any other Sonic character added to this game, Eggman should be that character. What do you think? Do you think that Dr. Eggman should be the Sonic character, or do you think it should be somebody else? Let me know in the comment section down down below. But anyway, the last thing that I really wanted to talk about here is the music shown off in Smash Bros for the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Now this one is another gravely disappointing aspect of Super Smash Bros. Sonic games consistently
really thrive on having great OSTs. If you get nothing else from a silent game, you always come out feeling like, man, that was some pretty great music. With that being said, Smash Bros is always famous for remixing a whole bunch of old or new songs to make it fit the atmosphere of the Smash Bros game a lot better. And let me tell you something, it's been Super Smash Bros Brawl since we've ever had a new Sonic remix. It's as if Sonic's representation could not get any worse. The one thing that Sonic always seems to consistently strive at and doesn't get showcased enough or at all as it should be in Super Smash Bros the series. In Smash Ultimate, we got the song Studiopolis from Sonic Mania and Fist Bump from Sonic Forces. Me personally, I think the least you could have done is just remix at least one of those songs. Bottom line is, Sonic's representation in Smash needs a whole lot of improvement. Hey guys, thank you all so much for sticking around to the end of this video. But now I want to hear from you. How would you improve Sonic's representation in Super Smash Bros? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as one more quick reminder, if you did end up liking this video, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me and my channel out a ton. One last thing before I go here is I want to take the time to shout out some of my amazing channel members. Thank you guys so much for your endless support and motivation. These videos would not be possible without you. You guys continue to drive me to make the best videos that I can possibly make. If you want to become a member of my channel, there'll be more information in the description down below. But anyway, with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching. It's your boy Sonic's to signing out. Have a blessed day y'all. Why are you playing that trash?